Hey guys, I just released brand new greenhouse plans. In this video, we're gonna show you how we built it. So our uncle called us up last week and asked us if we were interested in doing a plan for an A-frame greenhouse. Uh, we do have the barn greenhouse, which um, has been very popular and we're still using it and it's been great, but our uncle has an A frame style house with a real steep peaked roof and he wanted the greenhouse roof to kind of match that and blend with it so um, I didn't already have a plan up so I said yeah I'll draw you a plan I'd love to do that okay so before we get into the building process I want to show you a couple of features of this greenhouse and why it is awesome so it is very efficiently designed in fact there was hardly any scraps left over um, and there's minimal cutting so we really thought about it the plastic panels are the most expensive part. We really optimized the use of it um, and tried to make it really easy to build and install. Um, it's a good sized greenhouse. It's perfect for a small family. Um, it's sized to fit an off the shelf screen or storm door. So you can add a vent right into that easily. And It's got a built in vent at the back so you can Put a window in it and prop that up and get some ventilation going through the greenhouse. Um, and the most important thing I think is it's actually pretty easy to build. It only took us about three or four hours to get the whole thing framed up. Of course the finish work is always what takes the longest so that took a little bit of time too. Everything you need to build this greenhouse is listed in my cut list. So you can just grab that and head to the hardware store. So let's start with step one, the sidewalls. All of the lumber is two by fours and we're cutting it with a chop saw. And um, you could use a circular saw as well. So we went ahead and cut everything first according to the cut list that comes with the plan. And um, from there we can just start laying out the walls. Now each of these walls have a top and a bottom plate and then studs, just like a traditional framed wall. So uh, what we're doing here is laying out the top and bottom plate for one of the side walls, kind of marking where all the studs going, and then we're gonna transfer the marks to both the top and the bottom plate so they're exactly the same. Now that two by six board, that is the ridge pole. So I also marked out on the ridge pole where all the rafters are gonna go later on so we didn't have to figure out that. Um, just the little things like that make things a lot easier and I'll definitely remind in the plans to do that at that stage. So once the top and bottom plate are marked out, we can just lay all the studs that are pre-cut right in between the top and bottom plate. We're using three inch self-tapping screws suitable for exterior use. They don't need to be pre-drilled. They drive really nice. I do recommend using an impact drill or a hammer drill just to make it a little easier. These are Douglas fir studs, so they um, definitely are a little bit more work to screw into them. This is the side wall, so we're gonna make two walls exactly the same. Definitely goes a lot faster if you've got two people working on this project. It's always fun to see progress happen faster. Okay, so that's the wall and now we're gonna add the siding to the bottom part of it. So we took the siding panels, which are eight foot panels, and cut them into thirds. So you got three 32 inch sections out of it. And um, this plan is optimized to use the least amount of waste for the siding panels. Now you could also use tin here if that's something you're interested in. Just buy a 12 foot piece of tin and stick it right on the side there. You don't even need to cut it. Um, one thing I'd recommend is not using the OSB siding that we're using. This is all that was available at our hardware store, but um, it would be better to use the plywood base T111 because it'll hold up better if there ever is moisture on the inside. Okay, so there's one wall done. We built another exactly like it, and now we're gonna do the back wall. So we've already got the top and bottom plate marked out. One thing I wanna say here is because we're using that panel siding and it is based off of 24 inch centers. We've got to keep the studs on a 24 inch center so where the 
panels meet up, they can lap right on top of a stud. It'll all make sense, I promise, in just a second. So there's that last one going in there. So there's the back wall. All right, so um, I'm just gonna go ahead and lay out the gable rafters. These are the end rafters right now. And what I'm also gonna do is add in a support so when we go to put up the ridge, it's got a specific point that it can just sit on top of. So, and this also adds some strength to the rafters because it works as a cross tie. And this is all detailed in the plans. Okay, so that's the back wall and that's the back wall rafters. It's not actually attached yet. So let's work on the front wall now. Um, this is the door laid out and then the rafter attached to it and then the siding panels, we're just gonna attach that. Now, um, our uncle wanted to overhang and attach the siding panels now just because we're gonna be hauling everything out to location and uh, we didn't have all the tools there. So we thought it would be easier to um, do that on the concrete driveway. We've got some paving blocks that have that have been set down and put to grade. And um, Uncle Bill actually went in later and put in a row of treated two by fours underneath it. Um, what you choose to do for a greenhouse foundation is really gonna depend on you know, your yard and what you've got going on. So this is the fun part, the assembly. So we've got the four walls screwed together and um, now the back gable rafters that we've already connected, we're putting those up. So my husband kept commenting about how much he loved this plan because there was minimal ladder work. So, so much of it you could do off of just like a four foot ladder and it was really easy to do. You weren't climbing up on a roof. Um, everything was, you know, it was just that much easier when you're lower to the ground. Really worked out to have those cleats there to set the ridge on because it just made a step that might have been hard into easy. You can see that ridge is already pre-marked for our rafters and that matches the studs in the wall um, along the eave walls. So we're just using the three inch screws to attach the rafters to the top plate on the eave wall and then um, to the ridge pole. And then um, Jacob went up and began attaching the rafters to the ridge. What he did was every other rafter on the opposing side, he screwed from the ridge into the end of the rafter. And then every one, other one, he went back and just did an angle screw to tighten it all in. Okay, so now we've got to put up what's called purlins. And these are gonna support the corrugated plastic for the greenhouse and um, we're putting up the wavy strips. Now this, what we're doing here is making sure that the wavy strips are in alignment so when we go put the plastic on it, even if there is a seam, they stay consistent. We decided to put the wavy strips up on the purlins first, just so that we wouldn't have to go back and um, add those on a ladder. It's the little things like this that really save a lot of time and help you get a better end product. So this one, we I don't know why I decided to hold it up in the plan, but um, you should definitely bring that this last pearl in all the way down so there's no gap between the eave wall and, um, and the pearl in, and that'll make it airtight with the wavy strip on it. But see how easy that is? We just take that pearl in, it's already got the wavy strips on it, set it on top and screw it down. We don't have to go back and add the wavy strips on top. Um, you do want to make sure that the wavy strips are all in alignment um, between the different purlins so when you go and put your corrugated material up, it all still works out. And there's our corrugated material. So we bought all 12 foot pieces and um, 
in a couple of places we had to cut, so we used scrap wood of the wavy strips to sandwich in between to make those cuts. And the wavy strips are all up. It's time to screw on the plastic panels. So the sides don't need to be cut because they're 12 feet long. You can literally just grab the panel and stick it up. The little triangular pieces are a little bit more difficult to cut, but you can cut those out of the scraps. And then the roof pieces are exactly six feet long, so all you do is take a 12-foot sheet of the corrugated plastic and cut it in half. And then uh, we put up a ridge for it, and it is all done. I think we're gonna go ahead and add some more trim to it, and um, our uncle's gonna paint it to match their house, and it's gonna turn out really fantastic. So the thing about this greenhouse is, uh, my uncle's completely capable of just going out and building a greenhouse without a plan and most people are. But where the plan really helps is the efficiency of materials, so you're not overbuying, um, which will ultimately save your money and also an optimized cut list. So for example, these greenhouse panels on the top are exactly six feet long, so all you had to do is take a 12-foot panel, cut it in half, one cut versus you know two and some waste. Um, the side panels here, those are exactly 12 feet long, so never even had to cut those. So um, what I could add to this was, um, just organizing out the materials, the cut list, and just making a tr traditional building, but making it a little bit easier. So the plans for this greenhouse are linked in the description below. Head on over there and check them out. And if you do build this greenhouse, please tag me. I can't wait to see how your greenhouse turns out. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next week. Was that a wave or was that a bug? That was a bug. <laughs>